You're listening to Soap Dirt, the latest in television entertainment news. Hey there, BNB fans. It's Belinda from Soap Dirt, and I've got a very special New Year's Eve edition for you. We're going to look at the best and worst couples of 2023. I've got five best couples, five worst couples. We're going to talk about it. I hope you agree with me. If not, that's okay. I look forward to reading your comments about who you think were the best and worst. Hey, before we dig in, if you haven't already, please reach down, click subscribe so you don't miss any of our updates, spoilers, and news. All right, we are going to go number five to four to three to two to the first number one top best couple. But let's start with number five. Agree or disagree with me? We'll see. I'm going to make the case for each one. Sheila Carter and Deacon Sharp. I don't enjoy her calling him daddy. That creeps me out. But aside from that, I really enjoy Sheila and Deacon together. They have this very peculiar love for each other. They are like, you know, they always say that for every person, there's a match for you, someone who gets you, someone who's your person. And Sheila and Deacon have both done so many bad things that I feel like they can actually be honest with each other. They don't judge each other. I mean, Deacon's judging her a little. And they also have this electric chemistry, plus them being together rubs so many people the wrong way that I really enjoy it. And that's why I made them uh, my number five best couple candidates for 2023. Number four on my list is Carter Walton and Katie Logan. The reason I have them on the best couple list is both of these poor souls are so unlucky in love. I mean, Katie has had to deal with Dollar Bill Spencer and his waffling ways while he said that Brooke was the love of his life. You know, he said that about her sister and then he tried to get back with her. And then when she was happily with Wyatt, he threatened to take custody of their son son. He and Brooke basically drove Katie into alcoholism. And poor Carter, I mean, he has just had one bad relationship after another. He keeps proposing to people. It doesn't work out. Didn't work out with Zoe. Didn't go well with Paris. And Quinn, he was like her side piece when her husband had ED. It was also weird. And now Carter and Katie are together. It's very sweet. No one seems to be interfering with them. I feel like he should propose to her and they should get married right away before something comes along to blow them up. But I do enjoy them together and I'm happy they are together. My number three on my best list is Donna Logan and Eric Forster. Now, I'm not especially a big fan of Donna, who I think largely has cotton candy between her ears and thinks with her big boobs, but I completely applaud her dedication to Eric throughout this health crisis. She hasn't acted like a gold digger. She hasn't been trying to get him to change the will. She hasn't been grabbing for anything. All she's done is support and love him and shed tears for him as his illness progressed. You know, Ridge, I think, really did her dirty by disrespecting her her wishes when Eric seemed to be on his deathbed. So... I am looking forward to Donna and Eric also into 2024 once he recovers from this thing. But I thought that she really showed her devotion and that's why she and Eric made my list. My number two couple for 2023, Steffi Forster and Dr. John Finnegan. Steffi and Finn have gorgeous chemistry. They are gorgeous together. And aside from him, you know, having Sheila Carter as a mom and almost drowning her daughter, hey, everything is great for them. I enjoy the way they have stood by each other and defended each other, you know, and it's very sweet. And I think that Steffi really deserves this good relationship in her life. After so long of putting up with Liam waffling back and forth between her and Hope Logan. So I'm excited. I hope they stay together. I hope nobody interferes. And I love them this year. And I especially love that Finn saved her granddad. And that seems to have even 
heightened their love for each other. My number one couple for 2023, I know this is very polarizing. People either love or hate them. I'm in the love them column. So that's why I made Hope and Thomas the top couple of 2023. He has loved her for years, obsessively, you know, in the wrong, but now he's completely in the right. I feel like he has done the work. He's put in the therapy. He is completely normalized. He's fine. And then it's Hope who came to him. Hope wanted the relationship. Hope wanted him in her bed. She already knew he loved her and now Hope is falling for her. I feel like sometime over New Year's, we might going to see her finally say, Thomas, I love you. But she is showing her love for him in a lot of ways. She told him, I got you when he was really upset about his granddad dying. And they are just really sweet together. They have great chemistry to me. They have a lot of passion, but I think it's more than passion. And I think they're a great couple also because there are obstacles in their way because people aren't supportive of them, but they're overcoming all those. And that's why they are my number one best couple. Now let's talk about the worst couples of 2023. And this is a lot more fun. My number fifth worst couple. Again, this is going to be polarizing. This is probably going to tick people off. Bottom of my list is Brooke and Ridge. Just because Ridge walked out on her without even telling her, took off to Aspen to meet Taylor, basically hopped in bed with Taylor without even letting Brooke know, oh, by the way, our marriage is over. And that was all because he believed that fake CPS call that Thomas did and he never gave Brooke a chance to explain herself. Plus, Ridge is being very high handed. He, you know, was trying to kick Eric out of force to create. He was like, oh, the old man needs to go play pickleball. And then when he found out Eric was sick, then he tried to unplug him. And Brooke has been his cheerleader this whole time, his enabler, the person who excuses the bad things he does. And yeah, so I just really have issues with them for how he's treated her over the past year. And she just keeps going on and on about destiny. But then Hope was like, look, mom, you've dealt with a waffler your whole life. I'm not going to. I think Hope called her out and it just didn't even register with Brooke because she's got this destiny thing in her head and it's exhausting. Number four on my list is RJ and Luna. They seem to be an insta love. She showed up as an intern and now they're sleeping together. They did it off screen, but they were talking about it. They've told each other they love each other. They have been on a shocking number of episodes. They are being shoved into our faces. I will say maybe I'd like them more if Brad Bell wasn't trying to make us choke on them. And that's why they're on my worst couple list. Number three on my list is Liam and Hope. (laughs) And this is a two-way thing because Hope was openly fantasizing about Thomas while she and Liam were getting busy. So her mind wasn't on him. And then after he saw her kissing Thomas and in Rome, then Liam said a lot of really nasty things to her. I think he was gaslighting her. He denied the fact that Steffi was still on his mind. And she said, I know you ran right to Steffi. She was guessing. She didn't know, but he did. And Liam also was kissing Steffi in Rome. He's never come clean about that. He kept lying to Hope. And, you know, when she was saying stuff like your heart's been divided, he lied and lied and lied and swore it wasn't. And then he gaslit her and he made her cry. And he basically was like anybody but Thomas when it's not up to him. The bottom line is their marriage is broken because he's always had one foot out the door at Steffi's house. And he proved that in 2023 and for a decade before it. Speaking of which, my number two worst couple for 2023 is Liam and Steffi. Yes, Liam is on my worst couples list twice. Liam has no business putting his lips on Steffi. He did it in Italy. He did it at her house in Malibu. He tried to do it a third time when she was hiding out from Sheila with the kids at Eric's house and she gave him her cheek and pushed him back. Finally, He is trying to ruin her marriage. He is proving the case that Hope said he was a waffle boy by waffling as like when he and Hope were like, okay, we're arguing. He walked out. He went right to Steffi's house and said, oh, I need to start my life and kissed her. 
as if she has no agency, as if she doesn't have a husband. And then he kept saying things like, oh, I, re- you know, I really respect your marriage, but. And then he does things that show how much he disrespects her, he disrespects Finn, he disrespects their love and their marriage. That's why he's also in the number two worst. But by far the worst couple of 2023, and I think everyone will probably agree with me on this one, is Bill Spencer and Sheila freaking Carter. Oh my gosh. It was so creepy to watch them together with him saying he loved her, with him sleeping with her, with him putting his hands on her. And of course, we were all like, what is happening? And then we find out about this horrible, horrible FBI scheme that he and Idiot Ridge cooked up. And it was kind of funny because Sheila was talking about how lackluster Bill the Stallion Spencer was in bed when she was talking to Deacon. And that's because he didn't want to be there, but he was obviously still giving her the D. So gross, so uncomfortable, so cringy. Every time I saw them together, I think Bill and Sheila, we can all agree, are absolutely the worst couple on Bold and the Beautiful in 2023. All right, that is all of my couples I have for you. And I look forward to your comments, whether you agree, whether you disagree, whether you have other ideas, definitely drop all those comments. Please click subscribe if you haven't already and come back soon, because as always, we are here talking Bold and the Beautiful seven days a week. And this has been Belinda from Soap Dirt. Thank you for being a loyal listener. Follow us wherever you get your podcast, because you don't want to miss the next episode. Soap Dirt is on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more. 